All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 45. Today, we're still in geometry. We're talking about classifying quadrilateral, which is another way of saying we're naming four-sided shapes because that's what quadrilaterals are, four-sided shapes. Let's take a look and see what's going on today. So, on page 285 of your book, you're going to see the three main types of quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral we learned when we were classifying polygons is any four-sided shape. Now, we have three more classifications here. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. And the tricky part to think about is that pair. You have this line here is parallel with this line here. That together is one pair. And then we also have this side here running parallel to this side here. That's another pair for two pairs. Over here, trapezoids, that has one pair of parallel sides. This side here is running parallel to this side here. They will never ever touch. They are parallel. Or you could also have a trapezium where there's no pairs of parallel sides. Makes sense so far? If it didn't, I strongly recommend hitting rewind because we have some more classifications to go on to after this. So these were the three main classifications that I just showed you, but now under parallelograms, they come in three more flavors. A parallelogram with four right angles, hey, that's a rectangle. Or if it's a parallelogram with four equal length sides, that's a rhombus. Or if it's a parallelogram with four equal sides and four right angles, that's a square. Now, here's the goofy thing. A square, if you follow the lines up, could also be a rhombus. It can also be a rectangle. And it can also be a parallelogram. And for sure, they're all types of quadrilaterals. So a square would actually have four technical names because it has four equal sides, it has four right angles, and it has two pairs of parallel sides. So they might ask you to do some stuff like draw a parallelogram. All you would have to do is draw some form of quadrilateral that would have two pairs of parallel sides. Maybe you'd want it to be a square. Maybe you would want it to be a rectangle. Maybe you just want to go and draw a basic parallelogram. The choice would be totally up to you. How about if we had to go and draw a trapezoid? That would be any type of shape that would have one pair of parallel sides, right? That side would be parallel to that side. And the trickiest part when you're trying to draw, you want to be as neat as you possibly can because if I can't tell that at least one of your sides is attempting to be parallel, I can't mark it right. How about this one? If we had to draw a trapezium, that's where no sides are parallel. I usually draw the adjoining sides just so I can make sure that nothing ended up parallel. There's a pair of sides that are not parallel. I'm going to make sure these two sides are not parallel. And there you'd have a trapezium. So check out this one. How many pairs of 
perpendicular. Be careful, that word does not say parallel. That now is perpendicular to the square half. Well, if we think about it, this side would be perpendicular to this side. That would be one pair, right? But this side's also perpendicular to this side. That would be another pair. Hold on, we're not done yet, though. Isn't this side perpendicular to this side? Absolutely it is. And while we're on the subject, how about this side perpendicular to that side? So how many pairs of perpendicular sides does a square have? If you sat and thought about it, it actually has four pairs of parallel sides, right? How about this one? How many does a trapezoid have? This side is not perpendicular to any other sides. This side down here is not perpendicular to any other sides. Perpendicular means they have to meet and form 90 degree angles. Do you see a 90 degree angle anywhere in this shape? No, you should not. So how many does it have? A big old zero, right? Check out this one. It says the words parallelogram trapezoid, trapezium, rectangle, rhombus, and square are used to classify the quadrilaterals. Use every word that applies to describe each quadrilateral. So, looks to me like I have something going on in the parallelogram family here. So, parallelogram would be one of my words I'd use to describe it. But, it also looks like it has four equal length sides. So I would say it would also have to be a rhombus. You would write down parallelogram and rhombus if you were describing this particular shape. And no, it's not a diamond. How about over here if we had to pick out all the different types of this? For sure, again, it looks to me like I have two pairs of parallel sides, so he's definitely got to be a parallelogram. But doesn't he also have four right angles? He would definitely be a rectangle also. And if you went and looked at it this way, this might help you get a bead on it. Wouldn't that guy also then be considered a rhombus because all four sides are equal length? And if you have four right angles as a rectangle and four equal length sides as a rhombus, doesn't that also make it as a square? You would have to write down all four of these classifications. Let's try this one here. You have one pair of parallel sides. What does that make it? There's only one trapezoid. The lines aren't connected to anything else on trapezoid, right? All these connect up to the parallelogram. How about this one here? It looks to me like I have no equal sides. No equal sides. Hopefully you remember the name. He's a trapezium. And that is definitely the end. Not too tough of a Socrative quiz, but I'm here to tell you, you're going to need to look in your book, mainly on page 285, for when you take the Socrative quiz.